I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 106, Wipeout 64. Released in 1998, this game was developed by Cygnosis and published by Midway. Another game I'd absolutely never heard of in my life. Hey, there's a lot of games out there, alright? I think this one was more popular on PlayStation based on comments from some of my viewers. With the name Wipeout, I was expecting some kind of obstacle course, probably because of that one game show. That's not what it is at all though. It's a racing game that took quite a bit of inspiration from F-Zero it seems. Now I really enjoyed Star Wars Episode 1 Racer and I'd say that's the closest game we've seen to F-Zero so far. So I had a bit of hope going into this one. Let's get into it. The main single player mode in this game is the challenge mode so that's what we'll be doing to beat this game. There are three types of challenges. Race, time trial, and weapon. Each one has a bunch of different individual challenges within. I went with race first because it was the first one, so why not? When I selected a challenge, it showed an insane amount of info on the screen. It honestly looked like gibberish. Like, what the heck are all these symbols where it says weapons? The gist of it is that we are in a race against other people and we gain a gold, silver, or bronze medal for first, second, or third place respectively. So into the first race I went. It always starts you in last place and you're playing a game of catch up. There are plenty of pads on the ground that either speed you up or give you a weapon. Some of them aren't weapons at all though, like you can get a simple boost or a weird one called autopilot. This is kind of like the bullet bill in Mario Kart 8 I guess. It speeds you up and turns perfectly for a short time, although you don't crash the other players if you bump them. The symbols they use for the weapons are just so odd. Maybe they wanted to be unique about it or something, but the symbols don't really match the power-ups at all. It just came down to me memorizing them. Like, I guess if you'd never seen letters before and you had to memorize those or something like that. Most of them though are weapons and they harm the other racers. If they take enough damage, you can blow their vehicle up and knock them out of the race permanently. I ended up getting fourth place on this first attempt, which rewarded me with a big fat nothing. There's a weird quirk with the autopilot too. I hadn't realized it yet in this playthrough at this point, but the autopilot doesn't want to disengage during a turn. This means if you time it to where the timer runs out just before a series of turns, you can keep the increased speed and perfect turning much longer than usual. On this second attempt, I got third place. Not too bad for my second try ever. Another thing with races in this game is getting a boosted start. So many racing games do this and it seems like they all try to do their own unique thing. It's kind of like knowing the secret password or something like that. Can't we just standardize boosted starts to all work the same way? In this one you have to get the speed meter, which is the red bar in the bottom right, to about two thirds full. This gives you a boosted start. Three. Two, one, go. Oh shoot, that is a doesn't make much sense, but that's how they programmed it. Still think Arrow Gauge had the weirdest one. I think the wildest weapon in the game is what I call the Earthquake power-up. It sends a huge pulse through the racetrack, bouncing and heavily damaging anyone in its path. And it goes for a very far distance, too. I think it's just neat how the track itself warps like that. I'm sure that wasn't easy to code. Getting first in these races requires you to perform quite well. On this attempt, I reached second place and I was overlapping other racers before even seeing the person in first place. It ended up taking quite a few tries to land first on this very first race. There were a few close calls along the way though. Oh no! Why did I slow down? After many failures, I finally had a decent run. Stop! God, how many? Oh, wait. Yes! Oh my god, finally! That's so hard. Man, if it took that long to just beat one challenge, this seemed like it was going to be a hard game. With the power-ups involved, you not only have to play extremely well to win, but you also have to get lucky. You can definitely get Mario carded in this game too. With that done, the second challenge was unlocked. 
Actually, it unlocked for getting bronze, but there's a benefit to getting first. More on that later. The second race challenging was interesting because there were no weapons at all for it. This essentially removed all of the randomness from the race and put it up to pure player skill. The main thing is hitting as many boost pads as possible and avoid hitting the walls. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's easy. You really have to learn the tracks and perform with only a few or sometimes even no mistakes to have a shot at first. I would usually improve with each successive attempt, but it took a while to truly master the tracks enough to get first place. Sometimes, though, the most unexpected things get in the way of winning. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why, did... Why does this happen so often? Uh, yeah, the game crashed, and of course I hadn't saved. At least it happened early on. Now I made sure to save immediately after I won a challenge. After painfully doing that first race again, I was back to the second one. The end of the track had this super curvy layout, and it was so hard to miss the walls. It requires mastery of the air brakes. They let you kind of drift without slowing down. It's similar to the ones in Star Wars Episode 1 Racer, honestly. But, uh, I had a couple mistakes here. He choked! Chokerino! God, what is wrong with me? Finally, though, after so many fails, I had the best run. It had been nearly two hours and I had completed exactly two challenges. Considering there are six challenges for each category... Yeah, we might be here a while. Hopefully they aren't all this hard. With challenge three coming up, I was now in a new car, the Rapier. You don't get to choose what you drive, the game just picks what to use for you. This thing was fast, along with being harder to turn properly. And when I say fast, I mean real fast. You like clip through the ceiling if you boost at certain times. Along with different speed and turning, the different vehicles have a unique super weapon. The previous car had a machine gun that shot forward dealing huge damage, and this one spawns a barrier in front of you that will slow down other vehicles and deal damage to them. Not sure which one I like better. Man, this was where I started to realize just how fun this game can be. Like, you just go so fast sometimes, and it feels great to zoom through the tracks without crashing. The controls for the game felt really smooth. It took 50 minutes or so to beat this one, about the same as the previous two. I don't think I was struggling or anything really, it's just the game was tough. It did feel a bit more fair though, because there were four laps instead of three. This just gave me more time to catch up to first place. Challenge 4 had no weapons once again. Sure, that gets rid of the randomness, but it requires you to play a lot more optimally as well. Plus, with no weapons, that also includes no autopilot, which can really save you during the tougher sections of a track. The hardest part of this one was there was a turn that was essentially 90 degrees. Hitting this at full speed will lead to disaster, so I really had to get used to braking. It's kind of a thing you just get the feel for, really. Then at the end of the track, there was a section with multiple turns in a row, but not as drastic. These use the air brake to drift along them. If you do it right, you can coast through without losing much speed at all. This was the quickest win yet. Only took 20 minutes to get first place, even though I almost threw it away. This one was real fun to optimize. Challenge 5 brought us the Phantom to drive, and this thing's speed is absurd. A lot of the time I would shoot missiles and outspeed them. How is that even possible? So one thing I haven't talked about is the damage meter. It's that purple one in the bottom right corner. Just like you can blow up the other racers, they can blow you up as well. When you finish a lap, there's an alternate lane that heals your vehicle. It doesn't really slow you down at all, only if you screw up and hit the wall due to turning. I think the hardest part of this track was where you make a jump over the track and go directly into multiple turns. The speed just doesn't work out here. Despite driving like absolute trash, I got third place on my very first try. I think it's because there are five laps this time. It seems like the more laps there are, the easier it is to catch up to first. Oh yeah, the game tends to not let you veer off the track, although if you are airborne, it's uh, a bit less strict. Huh. Whoa! 
<laughs> what was that, man? This vehicle's super weapon is just a lock-on bomb that deals more damage than the normal missiles. It's honestly kinda trash in comparison to the previous two. This race really pushed me to my limits. I had been going at it for well over two hours, and still no victory. When a weapon is picked up, there's a robotic voice that says the weapon name. The way it pronounced Mines sounded like it was saying Mayans. So we decided it was the Mayans attacking us. And boy, they were ruthless sometimes. Y'all are making me hear Mayans now. Mayans. I don't think that really helps. Oh my god! It wasn't just the Mayans that could ruin a run either. Sometimes it was the earthquake. This game is so freaking stupid sometimes! Oh my god! I can't stand it! There was one thing that helped me a little bit. At the part where you fly in the air before turns, you could hold down to make yourself stay airborne longer. This kind of abuses the fact that walls are a suggestion when you're in the air. Now, if you do this, you would normally land and just have no way of regaining control. However, if you have an autopilot, you can do that and then use it as soon as you land. No matter how horrible of a situation you've put yourself in, the autopilot will correct the course. Finally, after grinding this out for three hours, I played well enough to get myself out of this one. <clears throat> what? I'm in first? Please. Oh. Yes! Yes! <laughs> I tried to jump. It really, really was a test of willpower, but man, it was a lot of fun too. So now, only one challenge left. In the first set of challenges... Ugh. This one had no weapons, which usually felt a bit easier to do since there was no RNG. Needless to say, this track was hard. There were so many tight turns and we're in this insanely fast car. There was one part where there were back-to-back -back hairpin turns and it's essentially impossible to do these without slowing down a ton. I barely got third place on my first go at it and it wasn't a good run at all. There is a timer that runs in the game, kind of like old arcade racing games had, and there's checkpoints to extend the time. This was the first track where I kept running low on time. For getting a medal on all the race challenges, I unlocked a new track called Velocitar. However, we've still got to get cold here. I practiced so much on this one. Like, there was a part where I went airborne and I could take the turn so tightly that I clipped out of the playable area, but then came back in just before landing. And you know what? That practice paid off. Oh shoot, there's first! Oh shoot, there's first! Let's go, dude! Heck yeah! This was the quickest win of all, clocking in at about 15 minutes. I was so surprised to see that I had caught up to first place, but hey, I'll take it. For getting gold on all the race challenges, it said I unlocked the gold challenge. This was just a race challenge on that new map I unlocked earlier. Weapons were turned on for this, which I kind of expected. I figured this one wouldn't be too easy, but man, it was harder than I thought. Usually I did decent on my first attempt, but not here. I got 12th place, which is pretty horrible. Now, this is the most fun track to drive on in the game in my opinion. It's mostly straightaways with just slight turns. Plus, with the amount of boost pads on the ground, you're just going so fast all the time. There is one part that has a much tighter turn, but the autopilot handles it with ease. I just had so much fun driving on this one. Something about optimizing the races in this game, it feels kind of like mastering a hard Kaizo level in Mario Maker. You have to learn the layout of the track and take each turn perfectly. I don't know, it's just the way this game controlled, it felt cool to do. Like when you get a perfect lap where you don't run into any of the walls, man, that is a great feeling. With moves like that, I was able to knock this one out in a half hour or so. I was a bit surprised seeing I didn't really unlock anything for doing it, but well, that was only the race challenges. Time to check out the time trials. Real quick, I'll talk about the graphics and music. The graphics are decent. The textures look a bit rough, but you know what? The game runs at a very high frame rate and it pretty much never lags. I'll certainly take that on the N64, a console known for lag. The music, however, was so good. 
It's techno, but there's a lot of variety among all the songs in the game. None of them are all that alike, and it's quite well done. I really enjoy listening to it. So the time trial challenges take place on the same tracks as before, along with using the same vehicles as before. Man, it felt weird going back to this first car. It felt like I was driving in slow motion, but I certainly was steering like I couldn't see the screen. For time trial, you only run one lap, and it automatically gives you that boosted start, and you spawn with a boost power-up. There are no other weapons to pick up along the way. In the race mode, you had to be very good across multiple laps, but there was generally room for a couple blunders here and there. In time trial challenges, on the other hand, you've got to run a near ideal lap if you want to get gold. This first track had that curvy part near the end, and that was really the only hard part of it. I found it best to save the boost for the very end, and I narrowly squeaked by with 0.2 seconds to spare. One down. On the second challenge, I experimented a bit with using my boost at one of the jumps. It, uh, it actually went decently. I imagine a task of this game would do some really wild out-of-bounds stuff. It wasn't too hard to drive optimally on this track, I'd say. Part of the challenge of the time trial is just choosing the best place to use your one boost. I'm sure there's like a mathematically optimal spot on each one, but there's no way to know what it is. You can only experiment and just hope you're doing the right thing. I ended up going with using it right before the danger sign, and that allowed me to win by just 0.1 seconds. It took a half hour or so to do this one, which doesn't seem too bad. However, since I'm only doing one lap for this challenge, that means I had quite a few failures in that half hour. The third challenge was quite tough. Feels like I'm repeating myself, cause well, all of these are hard. I got a time I was quite proud of considering I didn't run into any walls. 38.7 seconds. It was good enough for silver and I figured the gold time would be 38.5, but nope. It was two seconds faster than that. My god, how am I gonna make that? I ended up using the boost a bit before the end of the track, which also required me to take a turn at max speed. But if I had myself in a good initial position, it was fine. 36.8. Man, so close. My god, this one took an hour and a half. I feel like I knew this course better than my own hair. But this win happened in a bit of an unexpected way. Oh, I tied it! Tying counts! Yes, dude! Tying counts! I had no idea that tying the time would count going into this, so I was super happy with this result. It would have felt horrible to tie and get awarded silver. This next track was wild, and this one will return later in the vid too. There's so many tight turns and it's impossible to make it through without some level of braking. Plus, there's those back-to-back -back hairpin turns, and it really makes this a test in how well you know the air brake. I was using my boost at the very end before the final jumps, and it seemed like a decent spot. Getting the silver time took about 20 minutes. And 20 minutes after that, I had the gold time. Once again, I tied it. There wasn't really anything different done here. Just a bit more optimal on the turns, I guess. Track 5 literally only took 5 minutes to get gold. I was able to abuse the fact that holding down makes you stay airborne longer to clip inside the ceiling again. It just saves a ton of time and, well, yeah, this was quite easy in comparison. The 6 track is so short, the gold time is under 20 seconds. I had a nice little run where I was 0.1 seconds off the time, which is always nice. Congratulations. Oh no! 0.1. Really though, this one wasn't all that bad. I just needed to grind out the perfect run. Considering it was a 20 second track, there was no room for mistakes. For getting a medal in all the time trial challenges, I unlocked a new vehicle, the Piranha 2. Well, too bad I don't get to choose which one I use for these challenges. We also once again unlocked a gold challenge for getting all the gold medals. We got to drive the new car in it, and it was fast. Real fast. Unfortunately, it wasn't on the new track, but it was nice to use the new car. Honestly, this was pretty easy. I beat the gold time by over an entire second. Well, now with two of the challenge types down, it was time to move on to the weapon challenges. What are those, you ask? Why, we just need to kill the other racers with all the lovely weapons in the game. Essentially, you do laps like in the race, but now our only goal is to reach a quota of destroyed racers. For this first one, I had to destroy five to get the gold medal. It doesn't matter where you place, as long as you don't run out of time. These are so much easier than the other two. 
Maybe I should have started with them. I killed six other racers and even finished in second place, knocking this first challenge out on my very first try. The second one was a bit harder, only because it wanted me to kill seven other people in just three laps. How am I supposed to fit all that in? Well, I found a way. See, what I did is just try super fast to get into first place as quick as possible. I wasn't even focused on killing the other people. Once I was far enough ahead, I went to a weapon spawn and turned around. This was only possible due to the boost pad directly behind it. And from there, I just went to town with the power-ups. You keep getting a new one immediately after using the previous one. It worked beautifully. The third challenge was much more reasonable, only needing 5 kills in 4 laps. Plenty of time for that. And the fourth challenge was even easier with only 4 kills in 4 laps. Challenge 5 needed 4 kills in 5 laps, which it started to feel like it was getting even easier. And finally, Challenge 6 wanted me to kill 4 people in 5 laps. For getting a medal on all the weapon challenges, I unlocked Cyclone Weapon Technology, which makes all weapons deal double damage. I'm not sure if that applies to the challenges though. And like before, I unlocked the Gold Weapon Challenge. Unexpectedly though, I unlocked something else. Super Combo Challenges. These combine the requirements of weapon and race challenges. Essentially, I had to do the weapon challenge, but also get first place. Before I could do those though, I have to beat this gold weapon challenge real quick. Alright, now with that out of the way, time for the real Dark Souls to begin. Now these super combo challenges were... tough. See, for the weapon challenges, typically I would intentionally slow down in order to let people pass me so I could blow them up easier. Now though, I couldn't really do that because I also needed to win the race. I had the cyclone power up to help me, but still, it was tough. Well, not this first one. I beat it in just a few tries. Honestly, I'm just going to skip ahead a bit. Y'all already know these tracks, the weapons, yada yada. I cruised through these, beating challenges 2, 3, and 4 easily. And then, Super Combo Challenge 5 happened. I had to finish first place as usual, no problem, but I also had to destroy 8 other racers. If you're already familiar with this game, you know where this is headed. The Game Facts page for this game has a couple sentences or so talking about strats for the challenges, but it has an entire section dedicated solely to this challenge. If you search on YouTube, you can find quite a few videos of people completing this challenges, but I bet you don't find any of the others. This game basically has all the other challenges and then this one. It's in a league of its own. The first issue is we are driving the Phantom, which has that super weapon that spawns a barrier to slow and damage the other racers. Not too terrible on its own, however, the only weapon you have available on this challenge is the super weapon. This presents a problem. The barrier doesn't deal enough damage to kill someone in just one hit, and it also slows them down. So what happens is you hit them with the barrier, it doesn't kill them, you pass them, and then you no longer have any hope of blowing them up because now they're behind you. Forget getting 8 kills, how am I even supposed to get 1? It took quite a few attempts for me to just get 1 kill, and I still don't really even know how they died. Honestly, this challenge is pure luck. I imagine the odds of winning with this stupid barrier are so unbelievably low that this just isn't worth it. I had to think of a different way. If you recall, on a previous weapon challenge, we turned ourselves around and spammed weapons to get the kills required. It just so happens that this track has a similar setup with a weapon pad directly past a boost pad. Unlike the weapon challenge though, I have to get first place. So turning around and sitting still isn't going to work unless I get it in first place. And I had to do it fast. By advancing the first place, I'm getting further and further ahead of the previous people. This means I have to wait for them to catch up to where I'm parked to even have a chance to kill them. But there's also the timer. If the timer runs out, you just lose. The plan was this. Learn the course, like, extremely perfectly. Be able to drive flawlessly on it, like all five laps being absolutely perfect. Hopefully, getting a few kills along the way. If I can do this, I'll have just enough time to get into first place and park myself at the power-up spawn and then unleash my wrath. For now though, I'll just settle for bronze and go knock out the other challenge. So I got the gold medal on challenge 6 real quick, and I didn't unlock anything. It just said I couldn't do the gold challenge till I got gold on all of them. Well, back to the grind. My first decent attempt came after an hour of grinding or so. I wasn't quite in first place, but I was in second. 
Sure, this isn't a winnable scenario, but it showed that I had what it takes to do this. One problem this challenge has is if the other racers die from their own stupidity or another racer kills them, it doesn't count for one of my kills. The eight people have to blow up due to me. I had another really good attempt about a half hour later. I was in position to take first place with quite a bit of the track left. I was feeling good. Oh my god, there's first. Please. No! No! You know, it sucks so much to be so close and then just run into a wall. I did at least gain some intel from this attempt. I could only camp at the weapon pad until there was about 13 seconds left in order to not run out of time. Oh yeah, the Mayans, they're still out in full force. Come on, dude, why do they get all these other weapons and I only get this stupid wall? They also had poorly timed earthquakes every now and then too. About an hour later, I had another real attempt. This time, I made it to the weapon pad in first place for the first time. No. Oh, 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 oh. Please, is there even enough people? I don't, I don't think this is it, man. Please! Please! One more! Where are you, what last person? No, you're so far back, I don't have enough time! Unlucky run that time, I didn't get any early kills, and the many of the other racers blew up on their own. Oh my god. I got myself in the same scenario again ten minutes later. The exact same thing happened, albeit this one was a bit worse. It's so frustrating that you can be in an unwinnable scenario like that. Plus, this time I eliminated every other racer, like, shouldn't I just win by being the only person still alive? Come on, man. Once again, I made it. I felt like my driving was getting a bit better. My luck, though, not so much. Now I learned there was yet another way I could lose. One of the weapons is a shield, and if I got unlucky, the other racers could pass by my camping spot with the shield equipped. They would completely ignore my barrier and just go right past me unscathed. It just never ends, man. By the way, if you're wondering why I always do it in that same spot, it's because I don't control where the wall goes. That spot puts the wall in a position where the AI will always drive to. If I try a different spot, like directly before the goal, they will just simply drive around it. It's unfortunate the right spot is so early in the track or I'd have a lot more room for error in my driving. I just could not get the run going. I even started raging a bit every time something stupid happened to me like this. Oh my god, man, why? Just let me get a run without these people doing this crap. I was truly beginning to give up hope. But then, something amazing happened. Hey, wait, what? No, that's Summoning Salt's thing. Alright, honestly, my words can't do what happened here justice. This was truly a magical moment in gaming. Something that just rarely happens, but you can't help but smile about it. I'll let the result outcome speak for itself. Oh! He just died. He died to something else. The first place just died randomly. Dude, look at my shield health. Where are y'all? One more. I don't, I don't have enough. Congratulations. Yes! Yes! 
Yes! Yes! Yes! Yes! Oh my god, yes! 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 Oh my god, yes! Let me break down what just happened there. First of all, I discovered a new weapon pad that could be done a bit later in the course. This allowed me to get more attempts at the cheese trap. On this particular attempt, I didn't make it to the pad in time and I was passed. However, the guy who passed me died to the Mayans, or just hitting a wall or something, I don't know. It wasn't from me. Then, I killed the 8th racer with just 3 seconds left. I ran out of time, but the way the game works is your car will begin to decelerate when time runs out. You don't, like, just immediately lose. So I coasted to the next checkpoint, and once again, I ran out of time. By some kind of miracle, I was going just fast enough to barely coast through the finish line well after the time it expired. I was in disbelief. This was one of the hardest things I've done in this entire challenge so far, and it just finished in the coolest way. Now, we're not quite done. There's still the gold challenge left. But this is more like a victory lap than an actual challenge. It's like we just got done playing one-on-one -on -one against Steph Curry, and now I gotta go play against my neighbor's kid. Only need to destroy four racers and I have a lot of weapons to do it with. I beat it on like the third try and that was that. You get a message saying the devs congratulate you on your skills. Another cool thing that you get is the title screen changes to have a gold aura moving around it. It's pretty cool. The credits are just available at any time from the options menu, so yeah that's about all there is for this one. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it, my journey to beating Wipeout 64. My goodness, what a journey it was. Some racing games are pretty bad, most are pretty bland, but some are a lot of fun. And I think this one was one of the fun ones. Something about optimizing the different tracks is just so satisfying. The physics in this feel great. The weapons are a bit frustrating, but it doesn't take away from the enjoyment too much, I feel. I just have no idea what they were thinking with Combo Challenge 5. It is so much harder than everything else in the game put together. I think I spent 7 hours trying to beat it. I'm not sure if they like implemented it incorrectly, or maybe it wasn't tested properly, or maybe the devs just wanted to be mean. All in all though, I had a ton of fun with this one. If you haven't played it, I'd recommend trying it out. It's pretty darn cool. The music is sick, the graphics aren't too great, but it runs great. I gave it a 9 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 10 out of 10 for difficulty. That one challenge, man. So hard. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. Uh, there's 284 games on the list. Uh, we could get anything. Let's see what it is. 3, 2, 1, go! 173? What is that? Oh my god. Alright, uh... We got the next NFL Blitz game. We, uh, we just played one. Looks like we're playing NFL Blitz 2000. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.